Guy Miner is back. This time we're talking about budget loading 7mm rem mag with Lyman equipment. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Guy, thank you for coming back on the channel. Good to be here again. Always good to have you here. So, we're here to talk about budget reloading. You guys have asked for more budget content. I actually, if you look on YouTube, have a budget shooting and reloading playlist. This is going to be one of the videos in that list. So check out the other videos. This video is really about Guy's experience reloading 7mm rem mag with the Lyman Brass Smith equipment. This was your first time using the orange equipment, the newer generation of orange equipment. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it, it actually is. Yeah, I've got some old Lyman gear at mm -hmm. home. Um, but it was it was fun playing with all this new stuff. I took me a little little learning curve to get used to how to sure. use anything. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, <laughs> I, I I ended up thoroughly enjoying it. It's yeah. good. It's good gear. So let's talk to start out with about what you can do with budget reloading equipment. Because some people feel like, oh, if I want to do really you know high precision loads for my rifle, I need really expensive gear, and that's really not true, is it? I don't think so. Uh, this is good, solid gear, quality gear. You screw in whatever kind of night, however nice a die you want to mm -hmm. buy and put in there, and that's going to help you get your precision loads, or just use normal standard dies and produce normal standard good old ammo. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting started, budget gear is a great way to go because you're risking a little bit less, and maybe you don't have the money for the high end gear, right? Right. And you're going to be able to, if it's single stage gear like this uh, Ideal Press, you're going to have every step in the process separate and it's going to guide you through the process in a very simple way. So the starting starting out the new reloader, great scenario. What about hunting? What about precision hunting loads? Precision hunting loads, um, that one, you know, the, the, the press is up to it. Mm -hmm. It's the loader's attention to detail and it's the quality of the components and the quality mm -hmm. of the dies that's mm -hmm. going to make the difference. And that'll get you your precision loads. The press is absolutely capable of that. Yep. And it's knowing what you're going to do and at what distances, right? Yeah. We were working with a 150 grain ELDX bullet here, which is light for the 7 rem mag, right? It is. I, I usually run a 160 or 175 out of it. But we'll get to this a little bit later. Some pretty impressive velocities. Yeah. And a, a standard deviation on the velocity that's a little higher. But if you're close range hunting, that really doesn't matter. It really doesn't, you know. I, I probably won't ever take a shot past 300, 350 yards at game with this yep. rifle, you know. So my thought process. Tell me what you think about this. Is decide at what distance you're, you're going to be hunting at, and what kind of performance you need out of the bullet. Right. The, the bullet is a great place to start. What type of design, you know? What kind of ballistic coefficient, and then you know, tailor your load kind of around that. Yeah, I'm look and I'm looking at primarily this year looking at mule deer mm -hmm. and probably not over a 300 yard shot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, relatively open country like mule deer tend to prefer. I, I'm not looking at a thousand pound Roosevelt elk right. in in the cedar swamps or something. Yep. I mean, that's that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at uh, something where I don't need as heavy duty a bullet. I don't need some kind of premium super duper mm -hmm. fancy bullet. And this thing, as streamlined as it is, it carries nicely out there at range. I so. like it. Yep. So you've got the starting reloader. You've got the hunter. Yeah. I really like the fact that you can tailor your ammo to your rifle and your hunting application. That's awesome. But then it's also possible to do high precision target loads, match loads even, with economical gear. You were using the beam scale, right? The Lyman beam yeah. scale, yeah. which we don't have here. No, nah, I, 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 may have, I may have left that at home. <laughs> Okay, yeah, <laughs> but we have footage of it. We do. It, it's there. <laughs> the point being, you know, I use a scale like the A and D FX one twenty I. It's you know six six hundred dollar scale in that neighborhood, right? What what it, is that you just said? It's a two hundredths of a grain <laughs> accurate. It's a balance. It's not even a scale. It's a wow. laboratory instrument. It's very fast. It's very precise. But you know, if you have more time on your hands, a beam scale can be another way to get to that same goal of extreme precision in your powder charges, but without the heavy investment. It's just going to take a bit more time. Yes, yes. And that's the whole thing with a single stage is mm -hmm. the biggest the biggest drawback to it is time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not concerned with that. I'm going to load 40 rounds of ammo for my hunting rifle, yep. practice with 20 of them, and take 20 on the hunting trip with me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be good to go. 
So if I take a couple of evenings and do that, I'm fine. Absolutely. Yeah. So unless you're loading bench rest ammunition, budget reloading gear can be a great way to go. Why don't we next walk through what you used for sure. the loading of this 7mm rem mag. So you want me to go over all these pieces, right? Okay. Yeah, and then the, the kit as well. How about that? Yeah, okay, good. I can do that. So what I used making this 7mm Magnum ammo was, I used, of course, the C-Press, mm -hmm. which I really like, Powder Major, Powder Major Stand, the Trickler, which is very cool little Trickler, and, mm -hmm. of course, the beam scale that I forgot to bring. Adjustable height. <laughs> that is so neat. And, yeah. it, and it's also real heavy on the bottom, so even, mm -hmm. even a Marine couldn't tip it over accidentally. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so what I, what I really liked about the, the C-Press is a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One is its compact size. Yeah. Because I have been using a, a larger turret press at home. Mm -hmm. And this thing, immediately, I had a whole lot more room on my bench, which is kind of nice. I don't have a big bench. And, and that's, it worked out real well. The other thing is this open front is so easy. Yeah. Bring, bring the cartridge case in, bring the yep. bullet in, all this room to work up here in the front without any interference. Um, and, and having the lever here right in the center, it's mm -hmm. ambidextrous. Absolutely. You want to work it left-handed, want to work it right-handed, yep. it doesn't matter. The ideal is cast iron, it's made in the USA and it's affordable. You know, I, I call that a good combination. Yeah, absolutely, it is good. And just because it's affordable, this is this is good gear. Yeah, um, well let's talk about the, the, so the total up on those, we had 354.55 MSRP added up for all that from the Lyman website. And right. then 277.73 from Mid-South Shooter Supply, if you kind of add it all up individually. Nice discount, really yeah. nice discount. You, you're almost uh, about 80 bucks off there or something like mm -hmm. that more money for all the other stuff you're going to need because yeah. actually this is sort of the core equipment but you're also going to want to think about some sort of a case trimming setup yeah. you're going to need case lube you're going to need a manual now you were using the lyman manual for this were you uh, i started with the lyman manual and then we started talking about these enduron powders and yeah. i took a look at the 8133 IMR, okay yep. and it looked like a real good match for the 7 mag so use that, and to get the data for that, I had to go to Hodgdon's annual manual and mm -hmm. also an article that um, uh, John Barsness had, had written. Okay, well, who so, you know, right? Yeah, I do. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a good guy. I've read his stuff so, in Hand Loader magazine quite a bit over the years. Yeah, so it was it was real nice uh, getting a couple of good sources like Hodgdon and, mm -hmm. and then uh, John's loads too. Gotcha. I uh, took a look at those and we came up with our load, which as you mentioned was uh, pretty zippy. Oh yes, so, definitely. Yeah, we'll talk more <laughs> about that later. But the yeah. prices on these things are good. Uh, you need a good manual to refer to. Um, I've got a whole article actually on what you need to load rifle ammunition, and I have a separate one for what you need to load pistol ammunition. There's a bunch of little things, like you're gonna want a zero to six digital caliper mm -hmm. to look at your cartridge overall length and to be able to measure bullet diameter and stuff like that. A micrometer's better for that, obviously. So there's a bunch of, uh, of, of different things, but you know, there's ways to get creative. I remember using Pledge uh, as, as uh, case loop. When really? When I first started to load pistol, because I'd read online that you could do that, and that, works, that worked just fine. There so. was no online when I started loading. <laughs> In the 70s? <laughs> 60s. Right? 60s? I, I was a kid when I started reloading. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm I wasn't even around then. Bench and <laughs> <laughs> I won't remind you of that. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the kit. So the ideal kit that Lyman offers uh, has the same powder measure and stand. The yes. stand is cool because you can mount it to the wall as well. I don't know if you noticed that. but I wondered what that was all about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You can wall. load it. Do it, you can mount it either way. It's got the hand priming tool, the manual. It's got a deburring tool for your case mouths. Mm -hmm. It's got a, a scale. It's got a loading block and the press. So that kit has a lot of gear. The MSRP on that one is 308.25, and Mid South had it for Two, looks like 241.64. Yeah, significant. Yeah. You know, like 60 bucks off. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. So that was a good deal. Um, yeah. It, it, that's a great way to get started, one of these basic kits mm -hmm. from Lyman. Uh, other manufacturers make them, but Lyman has got a really nice kit available. Mm -hmm. I like seeing that. Yeah. Oh, can I show about the powder measure? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You get done reloading, you've got some gunpowder left in here. It's got to go back in the can, right? <laughs> With mine, I'm unscrewing it for it feels like about 20 minutes to get it unthreaded and back out of there. This, we just pop this 
and off it comes. Mm -hmm. And then I can dump it right back into the can, no problem. Mm -hmm. You've got a little bit here in the drum you need to empty as well. Yep. Um, I may have spilled some powder. Maybe. But that's, that's how fun. you get your reloading bench ready for use. You sprinkle some powder out there. If you're reloading <laughs> shotgun stuff, you take some shot and throw it everywhere just to kind of season the pan, right? Season the pan. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I don't do that on purpose, but right. I, I have spilled powder on accident. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that's a, that's a great little thing. And it, yep. it threw uh, very consistent charges. Mm -hmm. I used both a, uh, a spherical powder mm -hmm. and then I used this uh, stick powder. And the stick powder flows pretty good. I did have to use the trickler to even sure. things up on that. Yep. But the uh, 25 rounds with that spherical powder, I didn't have to use the trickler at all. Nice. It was, yeah, it was sweet. That beam, and I, w I weighed every one of them <laughs> just to see. Yep. And it just kept throwing right on the money. And that's, that's another reason to like spherical powders. Okay, so next let's talk about the reloading process you did start to finish. Okay, well I started out with some once fired seven millimeter Magnum brass, uh, Remington Peter stuff. Mm -hmm. And got that all cleaned up nice you know in the tumbler bring it on out then it's time to lube it up i like that imperial sizing wax yeah that that kind of works and, great and there's lots of different variations on that now yep. but i like the sizing dye wax um, use that nice and slick pop it on onto the decapper and resize it i want full length resize mm -hmm. this this ruger has a little bit of a tight chamber gotcha and i find that i have to use the full length resize a lot of times i like to neck size cases but mm -hmm. full length resize work great on this the press had enough uh, leverage to where that was easy with the Magnum cases, no problem. Just nice. And resized, um, bring them all out, clean them up mm -hmm. because they've got a little bit of lube still yep. left on them. And it's good to wipe that off before you go further because you don't want that in your chamber, you know, it attracts dust. It's yeah. just good to get that off. There. Yeah, yeah. Get, get that off. Uh, you, you might contaminate your primers, might mm -hmm. contaminate your powder. Mm -hmm. So get rid of all that lube and off your fingers and <laughs> off the cases. It, it's a little messy like most lubes are. <laughs> so uh, do that, get all your pri all your primers back in, new mm -hmm. primers, and I use a small hand priming tool that works really well for me. Uh, with the Magnum cartridge, I like to use Magnum primers. Mm -hmm. In this case, I use some Federal 215s, okay. uh, which yep. is what I usually use on a Magnum case. Um, just you know, you're using a, a, a good size powder charge of slow burning powder and mm -hmm. I think having that extra spark in there, that's why those primers exist. Mm -hmm. So I like to use that. But you've got them all, all set up there at that point, it's time to go ahead and put that powder charge in. Right. And I like to, uh, sometimes I have gone ahead and charged one at a time, charge one and then seat the bullet, charge mm -hmm. one and then seat mm -hmm. the bullet. Other times I'll go ahead and get that whole batch of 40 or 50 or however many I'm doing and yep. charge them all, which is kind of nice because then you can take a look right down on your loading block and say, okay, they all have powder in them yes. and they all have, looks like the same amount of powder. Right. That's important. Yes. Uh, then it's time to seat that bullet. Yep. And uh, I was using the Hornady dies. I really like them. Use the Hornady custom dies. They've got that little mm -hmm. sliding sleeve inside there yeah, that aligns it's everything. I've been really impressed with the accuracy I'm getting out of that mm -hmm. uh, in several different cartridges. So, yeah. Um, that point, label it, box it up, and shoot it. And shoot it. Tell us real quick about the rifle. The rifle. I, <laughs> I, I, I love Ruger number one rifles. I only have a couple of them. I yep. sold a few over the years and I wish I had each one of them back. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ruger came up with this falling block rifle throwback to the old <laughs> British stocking rifles of a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think people probably thought he was crazy when he introduced <laughs> them in the 60s, but they are a strong rifle. They're an accurate rifle. They had some accuracy problems early on hmm. and all kinds of different cures were devised. The last few ones that I've bought have been remarkably accurate. Awesome. And well, tell us the story. You, you told me a little bit about oh, the how, nickname and how, how that I, came how to How I be. bought this rifle, <laughs> I was home alone, online. The rifle's name is Brandy because I was drinking brandy and shopping gun broker. Uh-oh, bad combo. <laughs> Bad combo, <laughs> credit card, PayPal, gun broker. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Woke up in the morning, realized <laughs> I bought a rifle. Uh, nice. And it's it's a really sweet rifle. The, mm -hmm. the previous owner had bought it 20 years earlier, put one box of ammo through it, cleaned it up, put it in his gun safe, mm -hmm. decided it was time to sell off his collection as he was getting older. Perfect. And yeah, good timing <laughs> and, and 
good brandy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I have a real nice uh, hunting rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is new for me. I'm looking forward to trying that out. And and speaking of trying it out, you know, we were just up there last night shooting, and these ELDX 150s, man, that that was some velocity. What velocity that were you hitting with that? That was zippy. We I think we averaged 32, 82. Something like that, and we had a, a one shot in a five shot string that went just over 3,300 feet per second. Dang. <laughs> this is with a book load. Yeah. Um, and I bounced it off a couple of guys who have a lot more experience and you know, checked it with them. They are, am mm -hmm. I okay here? And uh, Quick Load says we're okay. Yeah. Um, they say we're okay. It's just zippy, and with that streamlined bullet, with that high BC, Mm -hmm. Zero to 200 yards, we're looking at a drop of only five inches at 300 yards. That's amazing. It is, it is, and yeah. it makes me very happy about mule deer season yeah. coming up. Well, with that kind of velocity, I'd be really curious to see what would happen on a coyote. You know, I think that would do some damage. Do you now? <laughs> Am I grinning enough? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think it's going to work just peachy. <laughs> Poor coyote. Awesome. Um, well, this is a great uh, part one. Why don't we follow this up? Now, you've been looking at multiple IMR powders for yes. the 7 Rem Mag. Yes. What about doing a little bit more research? Maybe we'll publish another story on that. I think that'd be a good call. Yeah, there's a couple of them here that'll fit. So. Mm -hmm. Enduron powders, temperature insensitive, so a good choice for hunting. You might have days hunting in Alaska or Montana that could span freezing all the way up to 90 degrees. I remember backpacking in Montana, experiencing that. Yeah, and, and if you're, most guys, or if you're working up a new load, or you're loading your ammo, you're doing it in the summertime, because yep. fall's coming, so you want it, right. so you're loading in warm temps, and then hunting season rolls around, you're hunting out there in October, November, mm -hmm. completely different temperatures, and is your powder gonna work as well? Yep. So, Okay, so question for you all. Are you loading with Lyman Brass Smith gear? Do you have a Ruger number one, or do you shoot seven rem mag? Drop a comment, tell us what you're doing, tell us what kind of results you're getting, tell us how you like it, and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Guy, for joining me again. Thank you. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, Flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later, because I'm off to go shooting.